Well, good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the farm. Today, we're going to talk about crisis. Well, crises, plural. Two crises, in fact. One is midlife crisis, and the other one's real life crisis. So for educational and perhaps even entertainment purposes, I might as well get the midlife crisis piece out of the way. So the other day, I put out a video talking about just how desperate things are getting, and it's really not a good time to go out and run out and buy toys or material things. And then I went and bought a skidoo. <laughs> so I've been here now for, I've been in Canada now for 21 years. I've never owned a skidoo and I uh, never needed one, never wanted one because, well, I'm not really particularly keen on the cold. But here we are, we've got the farm. Every winter, there's six months of the year where we probably can access 65 to 70% of the farm. So this thing came up for auction. I put one bid on it and got it. It's actually in awesome condition. It's 2001. So I mean, it's 20 years old. So don't worry. I didn't break the bank. I paid cash money for it. Um, we're, we're free and clear on this thing. But uh, kind of interesting. I mean, <laughs> when this thing was brand new, if you didn't have a lined jean jacket, I don't even know if you were from Alberta. But <laughs> And back in the day, you know, it's a 700, right? A 700 back in 2001 i mean this was the apex predator of the mountains and now it's really just gonna putz around our <laughs> putz around our field it's gonna lead a pretty tame life for the rest of its days anyways the other thing i want to talk about when i said there was two crises well yeah one's a midlife crisis we've got that one established already um this is the real life crisis food shortages so you'll have noticed if you watched any of my videos here in the last week or so i've kind of shifted away from teaching homesteading skills to really just kind of strapping on a tinfoil hat let's just say that and, and just kind of trying to wake some people up and things are things are actually legitimately getting bad right now and it's no longer you know it's no longer about prediction there's like things actively occurring right now in our society that are gonna make life awfully challenging in a hurry and one of those is food shortages so if we look today, uh, there was a massive drought that occurred this summer and literally thousands of producers don't have enough hay to get their livestock through this winter. So the markets are getting flooded with livestock. That's driving the livestock price right down into the toilet. And today I just heard that Cargill, who runs one of the largest meat packing plants in, uh, in southern Alberta, is potentially, their workers are potentially going to go on strike. So it's going to create a huge, huge bottleneck in the uh, in the livestock processing or the, the, the packing plants kind of side of the industry which will in turn not only create short supply in the grocery stores but the supply that is available the price is going to go through the roof and probably price you know a lot of people out of the market in in terms of their ability to acquire uh, decent cuts of meat or I shouldn't say necessarily decent cuts of meat but any cuts of meat so I mean one thing that always surprises me when when it hits the fan the way people react to this kind of thing you take the toilet paper shortages as an example of this people rushed out and they just bought as much toilet paper as they possibly could instead of you know investing in paper companies and you know here we are we're in food shortages impending food food shortages people are going and they're just going to the grocery store and it's just supermarket sweep right they're getting anything they possibly can and that's really only going to get them through a very short duration most of that stuff you know but you think about how how long you can keep it and how much storage space you have you'd be better off to run out and panic buy a farm and just start growing your own it'd be way more effective and uh probably a better life choice than buying an old 20 year old skidoo anyways what kind of impact can uh, can a worker shortage or a worker strike really have on alberta's beef production or even western canada's beef production as well as the market share price for the uh for the producer well let me tell you this uh jbs and cargill produce or i guess not produce but process 80 percent of uh, of the market share so that's a significant amount and, and so the Cargill facility alone processes 4,500 cattle, 4,500 head of cattle a day, a day. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that's an incredible amount. And that's just, that's just the cows. So you, you tell me 4,500 cows, how many farms a day are working to produce that? And how, you know, what, what is the reality of that bottleneck? That is significant. I mean, that is, that is, uh, borderline state of emergency 
And you can bet that's going to have a major impact on the shelves. That's going to have a major impact on the price on those shelves. And the unfortunate side of things is that what that means for the producer is that the price is going to actually go down. The farmer who raises the cattle, incurs all the expense, incurs all the risk, is going to get paid less. So if, if you're not in a situation where you're growing your own food just yet, I would encourage you to do so. But in the interim, in the, in the gap between, you know, now and the time it takes you to, to start growing your own food, buy from a local producer. Don't go, to the, don't go to the grocery store. You can buy the same product from a local farmer right off the hoof. And, uh, and you've got to have a, an awful lot less to worry about. You keep a few more coins in your pocket. You put a few more coins in his pocket. And everybody's happier and healthier at the end of the day. Uh, so I just unloaded this beast out of the back of the pickup. I don't know what that thing weighs. 700 cc's. It must weigh 700 pounds. We're going to go ahead and see if it fires up. Hopefully it does. I mean, I bought this thing sight unseen. I shouldn't say sight unseen. I saw pictures on the internet and took a gamble. Let's see if that gamble's going to pay off. this skidoo yeah are you gonna drive you excited yeah let's go we're gonna take charlotte on her first skidoo ride not her first ever skidoo ride but the first ever skidoo ride on our skidoo you excited yeah i think we're gonna name that thing the bluebird if you don't know what the bluebird is look up the bluebird k7 a guy named donald campbell give you a lot of history on the Lake District. And it's got a lot of significance to our farm and our family. And, uh, well, should we go? Yeah, let's go. Well, it looks like the skidoo is a win. And uh, Charlotte loves it. It's got hand warmers, so I love it. <laughs> it's going to work well for the family. And, you know, honestly, for the, for the longest time, that was the reason I didn't buy one of these was simply because I'm not really a big fan of being outside in the cold at 70 miles an hour. Hand warmers makes a heck of a difference. And with the price being right, you can make a smart buy, I guess. So here's hoping the thing never breaks down. Anyways, we are uh, we're running a little low on daylight here, so probably a good time to run inside fix up some supper, maybe fetch a cup of tea. So I'll let you go for now. Hope you have a fantastic evening and we'll see you tomorrow. You say bye? No? 